Hi everyone, it is April 16, 2019. I want to thank my subscriber for linking below one of my videos to this article, Caddo Mounds Tornado, Texas Historic Site Struck. The tornadoes that uh, ripped through Texas a couple of days ago, well, it hit the Caddo Mounds Historic Site in Weeping Mary, Texas. Had, do you know of the Caddo Mounds? I didn't at all. Well, what's interesting is the one day of year that they have the Culture Day, Caddo Culture Day, was the day the tornado hit. They were having a picnic. 20 of the 40 people at the location were taken to the hospital. And this is the line of the tornadoes. And I don't believe that they were tornadoes. Because if you watch this um, video, you will see that the destruction is not characteristic of a tornado. Tornadoes leave a path of destruction, not spotty destruction. So what, did the tornado... Um, destroy a home and then leap up and come down and destroy some trees and then leap up again and no. Um, we all know the use of extremely low frequencies, uh, electromagnetic frequencies. They can create an awful lot of damage but they can also create very destructive winds. Okay, um, I found it very interesting, and I'm going to play a video, just a few minutes, of the Caddo people. But here they are having a picnic, their one day, which is a culture day, is the, the time for them to come out and enjoy, interact with the Caddo people. Uh, which have been absent from East Texas as a group since 1836. They were pushed out by Europeans and ended up in you know, sparse locations of Oklahoma. So here is a little bit of history of the Caddo people and the Caddo mounds. Around 1,200 years ago, Native Americans, known today as the Hasine Caddo, established a village here on the banks of the Natchez River in East Texas. The location provided access to extensive trade routes and to lands rich with fertile soil, abundant game, fish, and water. This village developed into a major ceremonial center and flourished for the next 500 years. At its height, an elite class of spiritual and political leaders governed a population of 600 to 900 farmers, hunters, and craftspeople. During this time, corn became a major crop. The bow and arrow, which allowed for more efficient hunting, replaced the spear, and pottery was created to serve everyday purposes and artistic expression. As the village grew, three mounds were constructed that marked important ceremonial areas. The burial mound, where community leaders were interred, grew over time. As each generation of religious and political leaders died and were buried, the mound grew in height. The two other mounds were temple or ceremonial platforms used for religious activities and community gatherings. They were also built up slowly over time. All three of the mounds were considerably larger at the end of the Caddo occupation of the site than they are today. There may have been more than 150 houses in the village and extended family groups may have lived in each of them. The location of Caddo Mounds made it a hub for trade with other groups. The Caddo traded bow dark wood used to make bows pottery vessels, salt, and corn for exquisite stone objects, shells, copper, and ceremonial objects from as far away as Illinois. 
It is not known why, after five centuries, the Caddo political system waned and the site was abandoned. The Caddo lived on in the area, but they were widely dispersed into smaller villages. The mounds remained on the open prairie as a witness to the elaborate social structure of an earlier time. When the Spanish arrived in the area, they used existing Caddo trade routes as their roads through the region. One such route became known as El Camino Real de los Tejas, or the Royal Road of the Tejas Indians, which is what the Spanish called the Caddo Indians of the region. And let me just skip ahead. I will link below to everything, so if you want to watch the entirety, just click on the link below. New information has been obtained about the village without digging by using a machine called a magnetometer, which employs sensors to measure the strength and direction of a magnetic anomaly beneath the ground surface. The magnetometer is used to detect subtle changes in the Earth's magnetic field that are a result of human occupation. When we pull it across a site, we're able to use it to map the various activities that have taken place on an archaeological site. The magnetometer has been instrumental in locating hearths, houses, and other cultural features at the site. This data, combined with aerial photography, has allowed archaeologists to generate a clearer idea about the size and density of this once thriving settlement. Over time, Europeans settled and colonized this area and ultimately expelled the native people of Texas from their homelands. In 1859, after being displaced for decades, less than 1,000 remaining Caddo were permanently resettled in the region known as Indian Territory, which is now Oklahoma. My name is Phil Cross. I'm Caddo Indian. I've made both all my life. Despite the disruption of their culture and an absence of written historical records, elements of their culture have survived into the present. Caddo Indians have a heritage of bow makers. I just feel like I'm linked from very distant lands and culture to my current culture as I'm sitting here carving it, and there's no better feeling. Today, the Caddo Nation in Binger, Oklahoma, works to preserve traditional Caddo practices. Although rare, Caddo language is still spoken by a few elders and is also being taught to the younger generation. Hello, my name is Shoni. We are Caddo. Kumbakia Hasine. Kumbakia Natititi. Nawi. Hello, my name is Naya. Welcome. Sisimba Kiha. Sisimba Kiha. Traditional dances are still performed and enjoyed by the entire community. Preserving one's heritage, roots, being uh, connected to the land. Not very many people do that today. And the uh, Caddo people are very, very small in number, but they're passing on their culture their traditions, who they are as a people. And when you have um, your elders passing on to the younger generations, their culture, tradition, values, language, you end up with a, a very strong people with a knowing who they are. 
I don't find that happening anywhere, anywhere. And I, I don't know where I come from. I have no roots. I have no connection. I, I don't know where I come from. And it's a very uh, bizarre feeling. So I've always been fascinated with history, but especially a people who hold on to who they are and pass it down generation to generation. We are, we're living a time of cultural destruction. And I was thinking about Notre Dame. It's, it strikes me as, it strikes me as odd that here, this cathedral that existed for like 900 years suddenly has this massive fire. And, well, it's very much tied to French culture, right? What happened with this fire? Now, I haven't been um, looking into it. Maybe some of you know. Was it deliberate? Because they do seem to be getting rid of a lot of monuments, certainly here in our country. Historical monuments. They're destroying, uprooting. What is our history? We don't even teach it in schools anymore. And it's always been a lie. So how do we get to know who we are as a people? We don't. We don't. So they will be, I guess, rebuilding Notre Dame. Very sad to see this happen. Um, these statues were saved. Are these statues of beheadings, or did they take the heads off? They're restoring these statues. I don't know. I don't know. But this was quite a sight to see. Okay. I pet goat too. There have been, there's a lot of videos on this, people saying that I Pet Goat 2, which came out in 2012, was, well, informing us that Notre Dame would burn and the spire would fall. You look in his eyes, and it, they look fiery, like there's a fire. And... This apparently is Notre Dame. sure do um, have a way of letting us know what is going to be taking place. Um, but they are destroying Western culture. I was thinking also about the Confederate statues and flags. Here, monument removed and proposal to remove monument. Now this was back in 2017 and look at all of the monuments removed and all that will be removed. Here, court rejects bid to save uh, the Confederate monument in Shreveport. 
not sure if that's how you pronounce it, Louisiana. This just came out April 16. They were trying to save the Confederate monument and they, the court rejected. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Arkansas. This April 9 of this year. Another surprise Confederate statue preservation bill fails. A House committee this morning failed to approve the bill aimed at preventing any government from altering, moving, or removing Confederate monuments. Uh, we don't know our history. There are so many lies about our history. One of the greatest things has for me to end up in South Carolina, to end up in the South, was to learn about the Civil War, the Confederacy, the Confederate flag. And remember a couple of years ago, Oh, that Confederate flag and everybody, it seemed, certainly mainstream media, claiming that that flag represented slavery. It was an evil symbol. And here I am in South Carolina, and I'm talking to people about the Confederate flag and what it meant. No one mentioned slavery. When did I learn about the Civil War? When I, when I, when did I learn the truth? When I arrived in the South just a couple of years ago. We are told so many lies. How could we possibly be a strong people when we don't even know our own history? What could we possibly pass on to the younger generations? When our country was started on a lie and it's ending on a lie. When the truth has meant nothing. So, you know, look at all, this is uh, Wikipedia and I was trying to get a list of all of the Confederate monuments, memorials, flags, that have been removed. And it's a long, 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 long list. What this list represents is the destruction of American culture. Destruction of our history. Erase it. Erase it. Because, well, what people have decided it is, is evil. Slavery and that's it. Most people do not know that slavery was a tiny bit of the Civil War. Taxation of cotton, centralization of power and government up north, the northerners taxing the southerners at quite a high rate and telling them that they could only send their cotton up north. They couldn't trade with any other country, only up north, which would essentially, you know, uh, leave the southern farmers in, it would just impoverish them. So it was the centralization of power. It was the taxation of cotton. Those were the primary reasons why the Civil War began. But if you tried to talk to somebody about the Civil War and mention just what I said, the cognitive dissonance would be great. And a lot of people would just roll their eyes and claim that I'm what? A, a white supremacist who doesn't want to believe that the Civil War was all about fighting slavery.
in fighting the South over slavery. Do you know that the North had quite a bit of uh, slavery, discrimination against blacks? 4 ton Confederate statue might be too heavy for historic Florida courthouse floors. This also, April 13 of this year, the taking down of American history. And if, if people actually knew um, the truth, I don't think that they would want to be taking down the Confederate monuments and flags. Because the truth is, is that they don't represent slavery. Try to get that across to people. See, the rewriting of our history, too, has been profound, has been really, uh, it's been ongoing. You know, what the younger generation is learning about our history, it's different from what we, uh, you know, baby boomers and the older generations learned. How do you, how could you possibly create a strong people when no one knows the truth and we're just left with our own opinion? Because when you are taught lies, lies are not facts and evidence. They're just lies. So you are left with your own opinion. And yes, when you have that psyche that turns on its cognitive dissonance, then you start screaming insults at the person. You call them a racist, a bigot, a um, white supremacist, and you're denying history. Well, but wait a second. Um, I've actually heard, did some research. I well, listen to this man. All you have to do is say the word slavery, and, 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 and it's been a, a situation where Christian white folks have in the South have held their heads down because the whole institution of slavery has been blamed solely on, on, on Christian white folks in the South, and the whole world acted as though they didn't participate, and the whole world did participate, and especially those Africans. And now children want to know the answers. They want to know why you sit and call their grandfathers all these demonic and evil, and they, they want to know these things. things. And the other thing is they see, they, they see certain, certain things happening with each, each other. other. Because, you know, black folks and white folks in the South and the black women have been in the of slavery for a long time. time. And I think one of the very reasons why there was a little fair toes to this flag, even though most of the Southerners felt like that the Yankees should have been the ones who, 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 who came, came up with another flag, another battle flag, because they... They have, they have a great deal of ownership in, 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 in the United, United States, States flag. Uh, uh, just for the war of, of succession against England. England. And, 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 but when they chose this flag, they chose this flag because of this history. history. I mean, I mean, this, this flag, flag has been used for quite a uh, for a long, long time. In Vietnam, Vietnam many, many, many times when, 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 when young black men found themselves in a firefight and then lost when the troops didn't know where they were going, when they, they saw, saw that flag flying, they, they knew that there was some Christian southern, southern black boys or white boys out there, there and, and they knew that they were going to be all right. right. The, the Korean, Korean conflict, the, the United, United States, States flag could not be bold. It wouldn't allow it. But, but my God, God the, the Christian cross of St. Andrews was flung proudly over American troops. And, and people, people don't even know about these things. things. The first thing they want to do is just all slavery and end all, all debate. What, what people don't understand is what has happened to us as some of us so long we've been dumbed down, down uh, even with the since reconstruction, with the with the advent of the building of the Freedmen's Bureau in 1865. Certainly, the North knew that it had to come down here and propagandize the South. So we sent its teachers here, it dumbed our children down. They did everything they could do to divide and separate black folks from white folks in the South and America. It's been 150 years. I'm trying to wonder why are we going through all these problems? Why all this hatred? Why are things that have happened? Yeah, I heard somebody mention the uh, 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 that me from Pennsylvania County, County, Virginia, Virginia today. today. You know, Rebel that me that me some letter to John Howard at the funeral in 1865 and told him, like a prophet, 
Don't, don't believe black folk are bad. bad. Don't, don't think them around in your prisons and stuff. Maybe, Maybe we, we haven't done a good bomb about the South. That's what y'all claim. Now you, you have, have all the money, all the resources. Do good by our black family members. members. And what, what did they do? A hundred years, fifty years, we lived in depression. Bad that because, because you know, I don't know why some black folks think northern folks folk have this great love, love them. Don't northern folks know history. They know about all those black folks who ran with, 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 with white folks down here and fought and died and sniped and killed. Yeah, they have no love. They have no love for them down here. Here's the thing about it for me that the truth behind you this thing is this. If the North did anything, any victory, because me, for me, the victory didn't come. With, 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 with Marcy over, over there at Appomattox Court House, House for, those for those folks. Did that not come? Because, because they knew that in the hearts of Southern people, even though, even though you might have won the battle, battle because you outnumbered us, you had repeated white, white rifles, you had soldiers, soldiers of fortune were bringing in from all over the place, in the hearts and minds of us, that thing still was there, the love for the South Atlanta America. So the only way, basically, that we can do this thing is to dumb down the people and grab black folks and divide and separate them down in the South. We can't have all those black folks running that voting with those with this Southern white family. Well, the system on war, we did that. So an orchestrated, and this was just a bad program. People think this was a mistake, or this is something that actually didn't happen. This was an ongoing Cold War that was just to do these folks in the North, to divide and separate us. And that's quite right. The social engineering has been going on for hundreds of years. And yes, divide, conquer, hate one another. And look at what, you know, considering, considering that we are a young country, a very young country, and we've gone through enormous changes in a short, relatively short period of time. Look at Notre Dame that was sitting there for 900 years. Okay, so we are, well, maybe adolescents compared to European countries, but we, we made tremendous progress and it's all being unraveled and it's deliberate it's deliberate, but sure as, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow, or maybe two of them, um, this history is deliberately kept away from, it's been kept away from all of us. But they get what they owe. You know, what do I know? You were stealing the job. Stealing. You don't remember. I wasn't around. You know, a lot of us don't know. I can't hear you. Well, you know, you have to get out of stealing the job. Abraham Lincoln's general auto number 200. You look it up. You know, come down south, rape, rob, steal, steal. Do everything you want to do. You never get any account of what you do. Now, I act like you don't know this history. Today is Confederate Memorial Day. Okay. okay. So we teach teaching. We teach each other history. We ain't gonna put you out when we act southern. So we act southern. We do. We try. We try to be a good combat bagger. And uh, uh, when, when you go, go back, back north, tell them folks we don't appreciate these people running around here, here taking, taking down, down our monuments, monuments and, 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 and putting down our flags and things. Uh, and we hear that they honor those fallen heroes. Trying to put what y'all are doing these A lot of blacks fought in the Civil War. Blacks, Southern blacks fighting for the Confederate Army were treated just like the white soldiers. Up North, the blacks, they didn't allow them into the Army to fight in the Civil War. That was the Union that's how the North was dealing with their black brothers and sisters. No, you cannot enlist. There were free blacks in the South. There were free, very wealthy blacks in the South. 
during this time, Civil War. And there were blacks, very wealthy, who you know, uh, lived on these plantations, and they had black slaves. Oh, but we can't ever hear that. What we need to hear is it was white against black only, and it's Western culture. We're the only ones, the white Westerners that had slaves and slavery, well, it's still going on all over the world, but it was something that was going on all over the world in Africa, in European countries, in um, South America, and here as well. But what is, you know, just beat into you is that it was just happening here and it was only the whites? No, that's not true. It's not true. Now, I'm not saying that there wasn't a real problem with slavery and uh, that there was no uh, racism, discrimination, and I'm not even saying that about today. I am saying that so much has changed, but you won't hear about those changes. Here I am in South Carolina, and yes, I am somebody who will talk to strangers, and I have had conversations with black South Carolinians about, and this was during the Obama years, and all of the racist talk on mainstream media, and I just started conversations. You know, what do you think about Obama? And, and not one. All of the black South Carolinians that I had spoken to, they got it. They knew it. The race card that Obama was playing, they knew it. Mainstream media, they knew that they were deliberately stoking the fires, trying to divide us. They knew that they were deliberately working hate between the white and the black Americans. Oh, and then when I would ask them, and this is in my lifetime, the radical changes that have taken place just here in South Carolina. And not one black South Carolinian denied, wow, things have changed. But then I'm at a friend's watching their German Shepherds. I turn on the news, listen to local news, and there is um, a prominent black South Carolinian, I think, I don't know, maybe a politician or something, but it was local. He was you know, from South Carolina, and he is talking about how nothing has changed. I was so shocked to listen to, to something that was so extraordinarily a lie, untrue, absurd, absurd. Now, for the younger generations, remember baby boomers? You know, we were born in the uh, 50s, uh, some in the 40s. So when we were young, like young teenagers, talking about World War II or World War I, it was ancient history. So when I'm talking to the young about what was happening in the 60s, the civil rights movement, it's ancient history. So as they're rewriting this history, how do you get through to the young? How do you try to tell them the truth? So, yeah. Our nation in particular, because we are so young and because we were the melting pot, there was, it was very hard to establish any one particular 
American culture. It's always been diverse. We've tried to rally around the fact that we're all Americans. So we rallied around that history, the Constitution, our freedom, the, our uh, individual rights. But we had no real, um, you know, connection beyond that because we've had such a diverse population. And when you have so many immigrants migrating to another country, and then you have a first generation American, you're not really rooted here. There's no real roots. Your, your heritage, your ancestors are from another land, are from another country. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. After, After learning, learning the, just, just a simple, simple concept, concept that, that the, the winners, winners of awards, awards gets, gets to write the, write the history. history. And, and that, that provoked, provoked thought. thought. That, that really stirred, stirred my thinking. thinking. And then, and then I, started I started studying some, some of the wars, wars that, that we won, won in the past, in the past as, as Americans. American. Like, like World War I, and Japan, Japan and, and Germany. Germany. Then, then I realized how, how not, not only did we win that, that war, war, but we, we went, went in and re-educated re the population. And if and you, if you look, look at their, 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 their history, history books, books their, 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 their embrace, embrace of their, of their heritage, heritage is absent. absent. They are they absolutely absent of their almost of the culture. culture. So, so I started, I started you, know, you know, then, then another, another thing that riled me up, up is, is our, our government, government and, and some, some of our, of our social, social uh, organizations, organizations, I'm not going to mention their names, that have done good during the 40s and the 50s, 50s to advance black, black people and colored people's, people's achievements achievement have become demolition squads. I, and, 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 and for anybody, anybody to play with my intelligence, intelligence and say that taking, taking down, down a piece of cloth off, 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 off a flagpole and, and digging up some people's graves, graves and moving their monuments is going to help straighten out race, race, race relations. relations, you know, yeah. what do you think that? Stupid? stupid? That, that creates more racial divide. That makes one group hate another group even more. Where's our think tank? Around solving racial, racial problems, problems in, America. in America, it, it seems, seems like, like it's absent. absent. But there's but a hidden agenda. Why? Media, media and the, the government, government, and all, all that makes make sure, sure that we that get all, all the information, the information we, need. we need, and they and show they all, all the blood, blood on the floor. There's a reason that they have an agenda to make sure that we do not understand the full truth. And Afro American, my community has been, been devastated, devastated by, by a cherry-picked cherry -pick history, fed to us from, from the 50s, 50s, the 60s, 60s and the 70s. 70s. That's, That's absent of the, of the truth about Confederacy, Confederacy the, the South, and white, white slave, slave owners. owners. And, don't, and, don't, and, and my, a lot of my, my own black, black companions, companions don't, don't believe they're black, black slave, slave owners. owners. They don't they know about Anthony Johnson and indentured servant. That was, that was captured, captured in Angola, in Angola Africa, Africa. Born over, over here as a servant. And, and we're part, part like, like a good, a good American, American should. should. And, and born with his freedom. freedom. And then, then after that, that he went out and fought slaves, slaves himself. himself. Many, Many of them were white. white. I, mean, I mean, it's, it's just, just behooved me to wonder, wonder why, why I wasn't taught about, about the Barbary Wars. At the, At the same, same time, time American, American slavery, slavery was going, was going on, on, authentic slavery was happening, happening over in Africa, Africa with, with 1.5 million, million white Christians, Christians held by Africans in Northern, Northern Africa and all through Africa. Africa. Why were we not told about, about that? that? So, so that, that is some, some of the things that, that, fi that, that fired me up and having me running around the country painting, 
and writing, writing about, about the South, the South when, when is Confederate, Confederate uniform, uniform, which, which yeah, I'm, I'm only, only here, here to provoke, provoke thought, thought, or maybe, or maybe piss, piss you off. You off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Confederate ancestors. H.K. Egerton. He had, I think, a great-grandfather fight in for the uh, Confederate Army in the Civil War. Many. There were many black soldiers. And it is such disrespect to them as well as, you know, uh, those who were white because they were fighting over issues that they believed in and it wasn't the slavery. We are getting rid of a history that is based on a lie. And if everybody, if the truth was actually uh, part of American tradition or if it was valued, then people would know the truth and we would be a strong people. We wouldn't be doing all of the crazy crap that we are doing. In the war, war uh, started, there, there were 250,000 free, free black, black men in the South. south. And, and they, they didn't have the same, the same social status as white people. people. They were free, they weren't slaves. slaves. And, and, but, but they did uh, own, own slaves. 10% of those free black, 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 black men own slaves. And the, and the uh, largest, largest plantation in Charleston, Charleston South, South Carolina, Carolina when the war started was owned, owned by a free black, black, black man with 200 slaves. My name, My name is Nelson, Nelson W. Wendbush. W. Wendbush. I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the Jacob Summer Camp 1516. So here you have a man, an elder who is trying to preserve uh, not just his heritage, but the Southern heritage, the trying to pass on to the younger generations, the truth about the Civil War. But when you have so few who do care who clearly believe that it's very, very important that people be honored and respected, that history not be whitewashed, rewrote, and then completely erased. Because when you do that, you actually just erase the people of that nation. And that's what's happening here. We're all just being erased. So I'll link below. This is very interesting. It goes into a lot of history. Um, look, the 45 communist goals, as read into the Congressional Record 1963 by the Honorable A.S. Herlong, a uh, representative of Florida in 1963, January 10, he read into the Congressional Record the 45 Communist Goals. Now at that time, it was a reality. The Communists, right? We were fighting the Communists. Nobody thought it was crazy. Nobody thought you were a nut job. Nobody called you a conspiracy theorist then. But they do today because the American people have been so dumbed down and have become so complacent. You know, there we've we've been softened with our 
comfort, or privilege? Um, I just want to read a few of them. Do away with all loyalty oaths. Be loyal to no one, not even family, which has been destroyed, not even to the Constitution. Capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Most in uh, Congress probably have no clue. They don't even know their history. And the history that they do know is based on a lie. Uh, you, you, you can't possibly get anywhere good when your entire history is based on lies. Uh, use technical deci decisions of the courts to weaken basic American institutions by claiming their activities violate civil rights. The social justice warriors get control of the schools. And boy, haven't they. Use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Common Core, it is not a curriculum. It is just indoctrinating the young to be the slaves. And they will be happy with their servitude, of course, um, be the slaves of the ruling elite. Gain control of all students. And that you see. Universities, colleges, campuses, all over the place. They're all talking about socialism. That was unheard of not too long ago. They all blame capitalism. It's not capitalism. Capitalism actually created the, the wealthiest nation in history. Now, it was quasi-capitalism, but it did provide uh, a very nice lifestyle. It created a middle class like there has never been a middle class in any other nation throughout history. In a few short decades, starting after World War II. So, like that man who was talking about, you know, we had these organizations and institutions that made great strides for the black people, civil rights, but they became demolition squads. Did he say squads? That's exactly what has happened with every institution. We had um, an educated class of people. Critical thinking was admired. And yeah, I would say that the dumbing down really started with the baby boomers. But we were still given an education that allowed us to critically think. It was important. Now, Common Core has destroyed critical thinking. And I say that literally. Where are the parents? Why are they so quiet? Now, not everyone, not every parent, but most parents are. Where, what, what's going on with the older generations that are not passing down American culture, the American way, the American traditions and values? It's like we're, we're just watching our own demise every single day without putting up any uh, substantive fight. We're just letting everything of who we were be destroyed. But who were we when everything's based on a lie? 
gained control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures, continued discrediting American culture by degrading all forms of artistic expression, eliminate all good sculpture from parks and buildings, substitute shapeless, awkward, and meaningless forms. You destroy history regardless, regardless of, yeah, you, you're just going to bring in all of the positive stuff and you're going to destroy all the negative stuff, well, yeah, then you're going to have a very uh, imbalanced people. So regardless of, you know, even if the con uh, Civil War was primarily based on slavery, you still don't destroy, you don't erase, you do not erase history. You don't just erase your past. You learn from it. But here we are putting everything down the memory hole. Promote ugliness, repulsive, meaningless art, and discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old-fashioned, out of step with modern needs. Now, this was... Uh, even before I left Massachusetts, when I was still reading the New York Times, and I came across an article. This, I, 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 I was like, I, I don't know, what am I reading here? New York Times. That's exactly what the article was about. The American Constitution. It's old. It's at a step with modern needs. Modern, um, is that, you know, we, we, it's worthless today. Discredit the American founding fathers, present them as selfish aristocrats who had no concern for the common man. We hear that all the time, right? And the founding fathers, they had slaves. Well, what about the blacks who had slaves? Oh, that's that we have to erase because it doesn't go along with uh, the storyline that we are living. It doesn't go along with the destruction of our culture here. Um, and while well, the truth makes us strong and lying makes us weak, so they, they just have to keep lying and, well, yeah, we got to have a race riot, right? We have to hate one another. Blacks have to hate whites. Whites have to hate blacks. We're all being manipulated. I don't like being manipulated. Belittle all forms of American culture and discourage the teaching of American history <laughs> on the grounds that it was only a minor part of a big picture support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social agencies, welfare programs, mental health clinics. Look at the call for socialism, ACA, communism. Bernie Sanders apparently has the most support. Bernie Sanders is a communist. And across the nation, the quote-unquote, democratic socialists won an awful lot of seats. We're going down. But what does that mean? It means that we will never be even what we were for a few decades. The middle class, the strong middle class, um, the freedoms that we enjoyed, the opportunities that we had, that will never happen again. It's gone. That's why I really believe that unless you put truth as your guiding principle, your guiding um, force, you you simply can't be a strong individual 
you have to know where you come from, the truth about your history, that does allow for substance within the individuals and then the individuals within the aggregate. And then you pass it along to the younger generations. But everybody has been demoralized here in the United States. And when you have a demoralized people, they don't know how to function. Well, they're not a healthy people. Yeah, they're the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society who do not care that we've been taken over. And it's become so obvious in the recent years that to watch Americans that thing that they used to cherish even in my lifetime they no longer cherish so well uh, since this is long anyway um, no I'll link below to this article which is it's a good article Seven Ways to Bring Down Western Civilization. I'll just read the headlines, and then I'm going to read some of it into another video. Deny it exists. Western culture. Deny it exists. Pull down all the statues. Pull down its monuments. Or set it aflame. Notre Dame. Um... Enact hate speech laws. Marry yourself to the state. Which means, you know, the, the, the family was strong. It's no longer. You know, now every... The, to see all of the statists that we have here in our country who love government, and then to see so many awake people who are still status and, and, you know, they're supporting Trump. Um, it's mind-boggling, but it can only lead to our complete destruction. Abolish gender, believe all victims, which is, you know, the Me Too, and getting rid of due process. Now, I was amazed. You know, when, especially during the Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh uh, hearings, people are just coming out believing, oh, that woman who, uh, I couldn't remember her, I can't remember her name, but who accused him of um, sexual abuse. And people were just right there. I believe her. I believe her. I believe her. Why? Women don't lie to take down people? Unbelievable. Um, let children run the country. That's right. Exploit them. No. Let them, and schools permitted this, yeah, we're going to walk out of class and we're going to march for gun rights or, or gun control um, or climate change. And considering their very underdeveloped political opinions, we're going to listen to them and take their direction. You know, something has gone very wrong with adults. So let me end with this. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. So we've got a lot of weak men and women because they don't know who they are. And they're creating a lot of hard times for all of us. Um, 
Trump is not a strong man. He's a weak man. You cannot be strong, absent morality. You cannot be strong if you do not have a strong moral core. They go together. You cannot be strong if you're lying and behaving in ways that lead to the destruction of life. You're not strong. You're incredibly weak. I'll link below to it all, but I guess, you know, people still leave comments. Oh, you never provide solutions. I provide solutions a lot. You just don't want to hear them. It means that you need to do some work to change. And we have to become a strong people. We have to learn the truth as best we can get at it because it's been so, oh my God, um, just, uh, you know, it's kind of put through that uh, machine that shred. It's a shredder. I mean, w that's what we've done to the truth. How do you put the pieces back together? You've got to dig in and do an awful lot of research to learn the truth and talk to people outside your social network. Yeah, guess what? Here I am in the South. I'm from the North. This so is not my social network. I learned a lot from talking to people who have very different life experiences than I do. And I learned a lot about the Civil War and the Confederate flag. And what, what uh, these government officials are doing is so outrageously wrong by removing these statues because they've decided that it represents an evil. They've attached the slavery idea to that statue when it doesn't represent that at all. It's very easy to manipulate a people that don't know where they're from, that don't know their own history, and who have been saturated in lies. And if you got this far, thank you for listening.